Okay, next up is Aditi Hazra, who is the co-director in the Channing Laboratory at Brigham of the Nurses Health Study Tissue Biorepository. Through her work, uh, the Channing Lab has been able to do transcriptome profiling of over 1,400 FFPE breast tumors from the Nurses Health Study. Um, her goal is to identify actionable biomarkers. I also want to say that she uh, has another uh, very important activity. She's the founder of a nonprofit called Pink Sari Incorporated, which promotes breast cancer screening and awareness in South, South Asia. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that lovely introduction and the invitation to be here among a community of innovators. I'm delighted to share my research with you on precision prevention of invasive breast cancer. Too many of us know someone who has suffered from the diagnosis, but also the treatment of breast cancer. I envision a day where invasive breast cancer is preventable with genomics and epidemiologic methods. I hope to better predict risk and prevent invasive progression. To frame this discussion, I'd like to share with you the story of an asymptomatic 58-year-old healthy woman who on routine screening mammography is found to have suspicious microcalcifications. A core biopsy and surgical excision reveals not grade one, not grade three, but grade two ductal carcinoma in situ or DCIS. One centimeter in size, negative margins on resection. Should this patient have endocrine treatment, radiation, both, or neither? That is the question I'd like to answer by sharing with you two vignettes from my research. The first is on subtypes of breast cancer and DCIS. The second is on progression of DCIS to invasive breast cancer. We heard from Dr. McAllister that not all breast cancers are the same. My research extends that concept of one size doesn't fit all to the genetic risk alleles identified from genome-wide association studies. To answer the question, what genes are these intronic or intergenic variants associated with, I asked, can tumor profiling, the RNA, provide us functional genomic insights on the biology of these variants and link these variants to the gene transcripts they are regulating or are associated with? At the time I started this work and wrote a grant application for the NCI U19, the Cancer Genome Atlas was using fresh frozen tissue. But 98% of the samples that are collected are formal and fixed, paraffin embedded. I was told, it can't be done. I heard, try harder. Several years went by, several postdoc lives went by, but today I have results to share with you. So this circus plots demonstrates what we found, 27 risk alleles associated with over 200 transcripts across the genome. You might have hypothesized that a risk allele would be associated with the gene closest to it. What we found is actually these are long distance relationships. The alleles are associated with transcripts far away. We have variants in chromosome 13 that are associated with transcripts in chromosome 22, chromosome 1, and chromosome 6. So to illustrate this example, I'll show you one of our findings. The variant is on chromosome 13 associated with a transcript long distance from it on chromosome 17. This is an estrogen-positive breast cancer. We found our second discovery was that this differed by subtypes. And and what we see in estrogen receptor negative breast cancer is that this same variant on this same chromosome 13 is not associated with one transcript, but 186 transcripts. This variant is pleiotropic in epithelial cancers and associated with a higher risk of ER negative, triple negative breast cancer. And I'm showing you here that it is very functional and regulates numerous transcripts. So this will provide us excellent insights into biology. However, we are limited by the small sample size of the minor allele. So next, I would like to test these targets by the CRISPR assay to really identify the targets from genome editing this particular variant. So continuing the theme of one size doesn't fit all, next I'd like to share with you the story of not all lesions are equally likely to progress to invasive breast cancer. 
So DCIS has excellent outcomes, so why is it important to study DCIS? With screening mammography, one in five breast cancer cases today are DCIS. These lesions are stage zero, they stay within the milk duct, they are not invasive, they do not come across the myoepithelial cells or basement membrane. However, a small number of these lesions can progress to invasive breast cancer. So going back to our patient, if you had DCIS grade two, would you want endocrine therapy if you are ER positive? But what if you are not ER positive? Would you want radiation? How would you know? My goal is to better predict who will develop invasive breast cancer. And to do this work, I am using the electronic medical records data and identifying what are the covariates that can be robustly collected in electronic medical records here at Partners Hospitals in Boston, but also worldwide at Butaro Hospital in Rwanda, at Tata Memorial Hospital in India. We are looking for variants that are easily collected, reproducibly captured, and associated with the biology of DCIS progression. Linking that to this FDA-approved genome transcript chip, the HTA array from Affymetrix, we are measuring 26,000 mRNA variants and 46,000 link RNAs to understand what are the genes that most segregate those women who will progress to compared to women who will not progress to invasive breast cancer. We hypothesize that an integrated risk prediction model with lifestyle covariates from the medical records, clinical histopathology data from the medical records, and the genomic data from this platform will help us distinguish who will progress to invasive breast cancer and stratify women into low risk those women who may not need further endocrine treatment or radiation and may just benefit from active surveillance, compared to those women at high risk of progressing who will benefit from more comprehensive treatment. So the next step in this work is to take a multiomic approach. I've talked about genome-wide profiling of the gene expression levels, the transcriptome. In my first vignette, I shared with you a multiomic approach linking DNA and RNA. So one of my goals is to have a pre-invasive genome atlas which links DNA variation to gene expression levels and to epigenetic variation. I think together we can form a global pre-invasive genome atlas to prevent subsequent invasive progression of, of early stage breast lesions. So I just want to end with what we have shown. So one, profiling in formal and fixed tissue is possible, and our data shows that it is adequate compared to the Cancer Genome Atlas fresh frozen tissue. We conducted a correlation analysis where our Spearman correlation was 0.85 and statistically significant, looking at a subset of genes that were both captured in the TCGA and in our data set in formal and fixed tissue. Second, I show that multiomics does provide new insights. Specifically, we showed that a multiomic approach linking DNA and RNA can provide subtype-specific insights for a pleiotropic loci. So we have an opportunity to not only learn more about ER-negative breast cancer, but also cross-cancer insights. Third, for this work, we wanted to facilitate data sharing. Vince Carey, who is a bioinformatics expert in our group, developed an R package that will be made freely available to the scientific community because we believe that data science includes data sharing and we want to facilitate further research. Last, I just want to end with the fact that we are at a World Medical Innovation Forum and I'm hoping to conduct research that is not only applicable to our patients here in Boston, but to all patients worldwide. Thank you.